Welcome everyone to today's program, which is brought to you by Ambulatory Alliances. I am Robert Kurtz, moderator for the webinar. The program will begin with a roundtable discussion between our panelists, and then we will have a question and answer session following completion of the roundtable. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. Our panelists will attempt to answer as many of your questions as they can during the Q&A portion of the program. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's panelists. We have Daniel Goldberg, CEO and Creative Director of Gold Medical Marketing, a marketing and public relations company focused on surgeons and specialty physicians. Daniel specializes in direct-to-patient marketing efforts as well as, as well as public relations and media exposure for physicians, practices, and surgery centers. Daniel focuses on four core elements of marketing, branding, identity, positioning, and research. We have Blaine Rush, President of Ambulatory Alliances. Blaine is, a, Blaine is an SEC registered and FINRA licensed investment banker. He specializes in ASC brokerage, inventory surgery center turnarounds and increasing ASC valuations through physician recruitment and syndications, and access to the capital markets and capital structure and consulting for surgery, urgent care, and radiation oncology centers. Finally, we have Jimmy St. Louis. Jimmy is CEO of Advanced Healthcare Partners and the former COO of Laser Spine Institute. Jimmy is an expert in healthcare administration, policy, and procedure. He managed the medical operations and corporate administration for Laser Spine Institute. During his tenure, Jimmy's leadership guided Laser Spine Institute through immense growth from one surgery center with one OR to four surgical centers with a total of 15 ORs. We will now begin the roundtable discussion. I'm going to ask Blaine to start our discussion. First question, why is marketing essential for ASCs? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, I believe we'll all agree that the success of an ambulatory surgery center hinges on the center's ability to attract and grow the necessary volume of cases. And the customers and targets of our marketing efforts for the surgery center are persons that can direct surgeries to the ASC. The, um, the primary customers are the patients, surgeons, employers, and managed care organizations. But uh, historically speaking, when it's time to schedule the patient for surgery, the surgeon usually tells their patient that the surgery will, will take place at a particular facility. For the most part, there's very little discussion with the patient about the patient having a choice of where to have the surgery. While this is still true to a great extent, times have changed, thus our marketing strategy and activities must change. Since most ASC operators would say that the doctors are actually primary customers for ASCs, and they'll tell their patients where surgery will be held, um, one would think that market is not very important to the success or financial viability of the ASC, but in fact, that's the default ASC industry mindset, which gives you a significant opportunity. The future the future of substantial growth belongs to the ones who take their compelling message directly to the patients in addition to the referral network. The ones that do this will uh, reap its benefit. And while this has been done successfully by some in the ASC marketplace, it's been slow, slow to be adopted. There's no greater example of the power of direct patient marketing than the pharmaceutical industry the chiropractors, and you'll also see some examples by looking at the bariatric surgeons and the LASIK, uh, LASIK, the eye surgeons. People no longer get their information from a phone book or in an encyclopedia. Uh, according, according to a research done by Pew Internet and American Life Project, around 80% of Internet users use the Internet for healthcare needs. 41% of people said they use social media as a healthcare resource according to a national research, research corporation survey of nearly 23,000 U.S. residents. Uh, most of them, 94%, said they turned to Facebook for medical content as such as diet and exercise, health education videos, etc. And historically, medical specialists got a lot of traffic from insurance directories referring physicians, but uh, today the uh, intensified competitive landscape is such that marketing has become much more important. We live in a much more informed society. We live in a world where the patients are looking to the Internet for in information. They're absorbing more of the health care costs. More self-insured employers exist. 
and direct-to-patient marketing has proven to work. The days where you could build your practice by the local primary care referrals is eroding. Um, healthcare is a business, and businesses have marketing because we have an opportunity to capture the patient before they go to the primary care doctor or their specialist that in turn refers to you. You can influence the patient's decision and be a destination surgery center of excellence. And marketing helps you beat the competition. If a patient feels confident that he or she is going to a high quality expert with reduced risk, advanced training, or whatever your marketing signifies, then she is almost certain to value your skills over your competition. Without distinct criteria for patients to evaluate what you can do for them versus another surgeon or a referral to you or past experiences or some other previous indicator that you are who you say you are or can do what you say you can do is indeed what they will experience from you when it's, uh, then it's a toss-up if they don't have that. And marketing gives you the history with the patient. Marketing creates and builds perception about you. Think about this. With surgeries, a patient can't sample it like they might sample, say, a piece of cake from Costco. They have to rely upon your reputation, your experiences, and expertise as a proxy for the expected results. Um, good marketing programs do not allow a patient to taste the cake, but they can visualize it, hear about it, read about it, read what others say about it, and everything short of tasting it. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to ask you uh, to uh, see if you have any additional thoughts. Sure. And, uh, good thoughts, Blaine, uh, as well. And uh, welcome, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you guys today. You know, we would like to think we take a, a bit of a different approach um, or uh, we're considered at least one of the thought leaders in the direct-to-consumer approach to healthcare marketing. And when you look at traditional marketing in the past, it was often referred to as direct to physician or business to business referrals and trying to find the best way to relay credibility back to your organization through um, other healthcare providers. And while that certainly uh, is a benefit, our perspective is consumers are craving for uh, more knowledge, a stronger knowledge base, a stronger understanding, and also looking for key points of differentiation as it relates to your healthcare facility or your ambulatory surgery center. So from that perspective, we believe in going directly to the consumers uh, in a variety of different fashions, which I believe we'll talk about uh, later. Uh, however, the main points here are if you're interested in growth, which I believe all of us are there on this call, um, we're all interested in sustainability, and we are all interested in finding a key point of differentiation as it relates to uh, your respective facility. The best way to start that process is to come up with an effective marketing strategy direct to the consumer that layers in a certain level of third-party credibility, uh, whether it's you know, physicians endorsing your organization, whether you pursue accreditation. Those are all great things that people can see to see your organization as credible. But we believe that marketing in its purest form to be effective, you've got to come up with those key points of differentiation that you offer, whether it's access, affordability, uh, quality of care, first-class experienced physicians, a, a first-class customer service environment, or a higher level of empowerment and education. Uh, consumers, again, are hungry for that level of information, uh, so we believe that it's our job and our, our duty uh, to help direct patients uh, towards the most effective solution uh, for them by empowering them with the right level of uh, education information about uh, each of your respective facilities. Thank you, Jimmy. I'm going to stick with you to uh, start the discussion on our next question. Can you discuss what, what are the objectives of ASC marketing? Yeah, we, we believe it's growth, sustainability, credibility, uh, knowledge, and trust. Uh, while it's all of our goals to uh, drive more patients to our facility so long that the quality of care can be effective for them. End of the day, we're all pursuing some level of growth to build and sustain a competitive advantage over um, other like surgery centers or um, healthcare organizations. So we believe the primary objective here, um, in addition to building that trust and credibility, is to encourage growth. 
So when you're looking at your respective marketing channels, uh, each of our consumers uh, may be attracted towards uh, certain respective marketing uh, channels. And that's why we wholeheartedly believe in an integrated approach to healthcare marketing that consists of a variety of offline and online advertising channels. Uh, but also, the point here and the objective is, let's understand what the consumers are looking for and let's try to find the right ways to adapt our facilities uh, to create the right points of differentiation for those key points I may have discussed earlier. Quality is very important. Uh, people are looking for uh, the best alternative to maybe an existing treatment option. You have to make sure to come up with the right message that's sustainable, that can preach quality uh, back out to the healthcare environment. So, Ultimately, uh, in summary, we believe the objectives here uh, are growth. Uh, that's why organizations would engage with, I think, any of the uh, people who are uh, here as panelists speaking on the phone uh, to encourage further growth and build that uh, knowledge base for the consumers. Thank you. Uh, Blaine, do you have anything to add? Yeah, just uh, two, two things. Um, marketing improves your standing in the community or creates your brand. And it's difficult to make a direct and tangible ROI calculation based on brand, but brand increases sales effectiveness. If, um, if a patient or a potential patient says, I know you and I know your surgery center, you have a reputation for treating patients exceptionally well, your surgeons are great, you're, you're in a much better position or you're in better shape when you get the referral or when they need you. We also know that the decision to have surgery and, this, um, and the decision where and by whom have multiple influences um, in that decision from the patient side. And when the patients ask around, they hear, yes, I've heard great things, they treat their patients well, or I've seen some of his research, I've read some of their articles, I've met one of them at their seminars, et cetera it will be much better for you than if they hear, nope, never heard of them. You know, so it draws patients to you. The more positive messages people, uh, be it other physicians, community members, leadership, other healthcare organizations, and potential patients hear about you and your surgeons, the more favorable their impressions of you will be. And here's one that's really not very often spoken about, but it's close to what we do and who we are. But another a uh, big objective for an ambulatory surgery center's market is recruiting new surgeons to your center. Um, the surgery center market is a maturing market, I think we all agree, and the number of available surgeons in the marketplace has rapidly decreased, thus you need something that sets you apart than the guy up the street or the surgery center up the street. If you have patients that need a surgeon, uh, a surgeon then recruiting the surgeons become that much easier. You know, establishing a specialty referral network uh, for this is more than likely not something that the surgery center that you're competing with is doing. Thus, it makes you different and it brings the surgeons to you. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, Daniel, I'm going to bring you in now. Uh, have you started a discussion on the next question? How has marketing changed over the past several years? Well, thank you, obviously, for having me. Uh, you know, to get sort of to the point, uh, there's a few factors of marketing over the years that have changed. Uh, obviously, we all know the competition has increased. You know, you'll see more ASC uh, facilities springing up throughout the country. Uh, and also, obviously, the online market is, is very large. Um, I think the biggest trend is that you have much more informed patients. As Blaine mentioned, you know, uh, about 80% of patients have done some sort of online research to, you know, diagnose their condition. You know, I've spoken to a lot of physicians who said, you know, a patient will come in and tell me the condition that they have. They'll say, I know that I have a herniated disc. And the, the physician will say, well, how do you know? And they said, well, I looked it up on WebMD. You know, from this information they're garnering online, they're now cross-referencing a physician in their area who can treat their supposed condition. Uh, primary care physicians have more become the, the source of affirming a patient's thought than they have with diagnosing. Um, I, you know, usually, you know, back uh, 10, 15 years ago, the model was to have a viable facility was to keep in the good graces of the primary care physicians and chiropractors who would, you know, if they were to refer a steady stream of patients to you, you had a pretty viable business. Uh, now that's obviously changed. It's something I wrote a paper on that was published called the, the gatekeeper fallacy, which is that the primary care and the referring physicians are the gatekeepers of your practice, and without them, your practice can't survive. 
uh, I believe it to be you know false. I think that they are a viable part of the referral process, but all your eggs should not be in that basket. As Jimmy and Blaine have mentioned, the direct to patient marketing and efforts and the public relations uh, efforts that I specialize in have become a vital source of attracting patients. Um, it goes to, you know, when you do a PR campaign or a marketing campaign, as Blaine and Jimmy mentioned, you want to create the perception of quality, uh, quality of care, quality of physicians, and this helps establish your brand over a competitor or another source of uh, patient treatment. So I think between the online, um, you know, the, the change, the shift to online uh, health management as well as competition, uh, as well as, you know, changing referral sources, I think a lot of things have changed over the years. Thank you, Daniel. Blaine, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I just want to reiterate that um, uh, marketing has moved from what I used to refer, what we all refer to as advertisement, to education. You know, for example, once upon a time you'd put out an ad to promote new surgeon in town, new doctor in town, whatever. Now, in addition to that, we would tell you, hey, have the surgeon write in article explaining a procedure that's common or what a specialty can do for you. I mean, because people literally search the net on their smartphones in your waiting room or on their way home from your office visit or their office visit with you. And the more times people see you and hear you, the more comfortable they're going to be with you. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, I'm going to send it uh, back to you to start a discussion on the next question. What are the different marketing activities you think an ASC should consider? Well, I think there's a, a few different activities you should obviously consider. Uh, having an online presence is, is vital. Um, you know, a lot of times physicians are using their websites as more of a, as an online brochure as opposed to a resource for information. If a patient feels they have a condition or wants to learn about a treatment, you know, having your website as a source of information for them it's far better than having just your biography and credentials on the, on the website. Patients want to be able to trust you, and if you're the one generating that information for them, you create a sense of authority as well as, uh, you know, a resource for information. Um, aside from online, I don't like to put the entire emphasis of uh, marketing online. I think that a lot of it has to do with public relations and media exposure, and a lot of it has to do with community involvement. I think a lot of times uh, facilities tend to neglect their local area but that's where the majority of their patients are coming from. Being involved in the community uh, really creates a, a perception that you are interested in the well-being of the members of that community, which is your core patient base. You know, being involved in the community in terms of sponsoring local, local events, sponsoring a sports team, really getting your name out in that community, again, creates an identity for you. When, you know, if you are a part of the community, when an injury occurs or when a patient needs treatment, they already know about you. They've seen you. Your brand will recognize them. Uh, also, I think starting partnerships with organizations that may be outside the medical world, getting involved in local philanthropy and local charities, you know, although it's not a source of patience, again, it creates the perception that you are concerned with the well-being and are a, a magnanimous, uh, you know, ASC, and that you have the overall uh, best interest of the community in mind. Thank and again, you know, obviously the public relations aspect cannot be, you know, uh, understated. I feel that when uh, a potential patient sees you on television, you know, as a contributor or, or in a publication or a newspaper as a contributor, your name in ink or your name on TV now affirms you as the authority on that fee on that subject. Uh, within my company, we work tirelessly to have physicians contribute relevant inf information to groups, different types of groups. I've written articles on behalf of my physicians for construction worker magazines, for truck driving magazines. All this information is tailored to that sort of lifestyle. It gives the perception that the physician is acclimated to their wants and their needs and, again, establishes trust between that community and that physician or that surgery center. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Jimmy, you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate the uh, the response. We can probably complement um, what was just said by really discussing the marketing channels that should be considered in, in a integrated fashion. So my first point here is I believe that in traditional medicine and the traditional way of running facilities are they just happen to have someone who does a little bit of marketing to see if it works. Uh, our perspective is uh, you should dedicate time and effort and uh, dollars towards a effective marketing strategy. The first piece here is decide are you looking to build a local presence or a, or a national presence? Do you have unique and differentiated enough uh, services to 
market this out on a national level. And the point being is we should all believe people will travel and pay for high quality health care. They're looking for that and people have a number of different mediums here which I'll discuss that they're going through to make a decision on where they should receive this highest quality care that they're pursuing. So we break up our marketing channels into really two core areas, online marketing and offline marketing. And if you're looking at subsets of each of those categories, the first is from an online marketing perspective is to have a very effective website uh, that's well optimized and properly engineered that's conducive towards a strong pay-per-click advertising uh, marketing channel as well as from an SEO uh, perspective uh, currently uh, has the right level of credible and relevant content on your website that people will go for further information to establish yourself uh, as the expert uh, in that in your respective field. So from an online marketing perspective, having those respective experts to manage uh, that traffic going through your site and properly engineer it uh, is piece one. Piece two for us, uh, just to summarize from an offline perspective, uh, the first thing is it has to integrate with your online marketing strategy. The message should be consistent, although you are likely tailoring to a slightly uh, modified or different consumer offline than you are online. We do believe that people who find you from an offline perspective will still go do their research online, uh, but we also know that each consumer uh, is uh, finding you in a variety of different ways. So this offline strategy consists of things such as seminars. Uh, are you going at the national level or the local level with your seminars to properly educate people? What are the things that you're doing to bring those patients in the door to your seminar? Radio, newspaper, TV ad, direct mailers but making sure that each one of those is designed in an effective manner. Uh, the message should be consistent, should be powerful, and should relay your key points of differentiation as well. But after you have launched these marketing strategies, uh, tracking is so important. We really emphasize the utilization of either off-the-shelf or custom-built uh, marketing dashboards, which will allow you to identify is your spend being allocated in the proper places, and if it's not, how can you reallocate it based upon the metrics that you have uh, evaluated? Uh, we have analysts on staff who are constantly, constantly looking at these different marketing channels with all the organizations that we work with to make sure that we're spending money in the right place. Following that, we also believe that sales is a very different uh, point of conversation than marketing, but layering in the right level of information to the consumers after they find you from a marketing perspective through a patient coordination system uh, is important. So having a team of credible experts who can speak to the patients about what they've seen uh, and what they would like to find out about the procedure or your surgery center. Uh, and then last but not least, introducing the more of the PR portion. Leveraging your existing uh, patients who have gone through your facility who may be very satisfied with what they uh, with the service they have received and the level of care and their outcomes, uh, utilize them for uh, testimonials. Put those testimonials everywhere. Consumers like to see people uh, like uh, just like them who may be located in very similar areas or have very similar conditions. So we like to make sure uh, that we work with those patients who are very satisfied, and hopefully for all of us there's a lot of them uh, to be able to utilize to uh, help spread the word even further through your online channels and uh, through your offline channels. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, we've already started touching on this question, but I want to uh, still discuss a little bit further. Uh, Blaine, I'm going to ask you to uh, get into a little bit about which of the marketing strategies Jimmy and Daniel have already uh, have mentioned and certainly any others you've seen. Uh, what works well for surgery centers? Right. Obviously, the SEO website, educational videos, uploaded to YouTube, articles, et cetera, work. Uh, but some of the tactics I've seen that work, that get less press, you know, like free second opinions, you know, list that prominent on your website. Because I know a neurosurgeon that reviews MRIs and x-rays for free second opinion. This gets the conversation going, and that's what marketing is. I know a male health specialist does a lot of vasectomy reversals. He gives a money-back guarantee, and he, he said that that's been a game-changer. Uh, use surveys, physician satisfaction, patient satisfaction, and quality of care are closely connected to a continued referral system. It, uh, it, you could use uh, email and print, you know, get everybody's email whenever they come in and fill out their paperwork, and that will 
uh, continue to allow you to touch the referral source, but also the patients. Um, here's one that that we put into play that uh, didn't get press, but it's significant. Uh, hosting the surgery center open house for referring physicians, where you feed them, give them a seminar on the latest technique or technology, have it um, sponsored by whoever the implant company is or whatnot, say it's fine. And here's the, the difference here. And where the attending docs get CME credits, that gets more of them to show up. It also build, also build into the seminar how the referring docs can make money off of ancillaries that are sometimes hogged by the specialists. You know, at the, at the end of the day, essentially what you're doing is bring value to them and then they will, they will come, CME credits and how they can make money. Uh, free patient screening, hospitals do that. Go to the 55 and older um, communities, if you will, do um, GI type screenings, eye screenings, et cetera. Here's another interesting one that we're putting into play right now. If, uh, if you're a larger multi-specialty ASC, think about a custom healthcare magazine. Custom magazines are extremely professional marketing tools. You'll be surprised how cheap they really are in the end. Uh, some companies offer a turnkey model in which the cost for the magazine is underwritten by advertising revenue with the pr principal ad targets being your vendors, service providers, and other healthcare providers in the area. You provide the publisher with a list of your vendors, service providers, and other docs, and they will be responsible selling the ad space. Magazine typically 16 or more pages, full color, glossy format, and include you know five six articles and the topics that are chosen by you. So you control it. Uh, they're the publisher. One of your guys can be the editor, whatever. The ASC and practices can either write the articles themselves, or in some cases the publisher will interview the practices authors and write the articles on their behalf. Um, this is this is good stuff and it's stuff that's not talked about that people think, oh I can't do it or hey that costs too much money or whatnot and in the end it just takes you researching and figuring out a way to get it done. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy, I know you've already discussed this topic a bit. Anything to add? Well, you know, I just think the biggest thing to keep in mind here is uh, just making sure, and I know we get into the ROI conversation here later, but properly tracking uh, these marketing efforts. Uh, again, we believe in an integrated approach. There's not one magic tool. If you're going to look for a wider consumer or uh, patient base, uh, you have to go into a number of different channels, making sure, again, that, uh, that your message is, uh, is consistent and is integrated well uh, with one another. And truthfully, w whatever marketing channel you decide on, uh, whether it's uh, from a PR perspective, online media, offline media, uh, utilizing existing patient referrals or utilizing existing physician referrals, just make sure that your message that, that your message is geared towards credibility, is geared towards the key points of differentiation within your organization, and is consistent across all those various mediums. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to take a little step back here. I mean, you, we have all these all these strategies, all these great ways of approaching marketing. Uh, so now, you know, again, how, how should an ASC go about beginning to actually put together their marketing plan? Daniel, I'm going to have you take the lead on this. Okay. Um, I truly believe that the first step in creating a marketing plan is actually doing the research. I think that, you know, when you put together a broad marketing plan that you feel will apply to everybody doesn't necessarily work. I think you need to do the research into the demographics of the area you're targeting, uh, find the larger employers in that area. Uh, find the local media in that area. Uh, doing the research is going to help you tailor specific content for certain demographics and psychographs. For instance, if you're in an area where there's a very high population of manual laborists or factory workers, you're going to have a higher incidence of musculoskeletal injuries. With that being said, get involved in the communities in, in, that they're in. If there are local contributions, whether it be a union, workers, newsletter, or magazine, or if there is a, you know, a local health section in a newspaper, write things specifically tailored for them. But if you don't do the research and don't know who's in your area, you're never, it's never going to work. You're going to have these blanket advertisements or marketing campaigns that don't really speak to, to the groups who need your services. 
when you do the research and you find out you know what people are looking for, it gives you an opportunity to better put together things that you feel will be interested in. Um, so I think demographic and psychographic research are imperative, as well as finding the local media in that in that area. Uh, we do a lot of media research and find out what the either television producers or newspaper contributors or magazines are looking for in terms of content. Whatever they're looking for in terms of health content, my clients are always available to write that content for them. Again, solidifying their authority in that field. So I, I definitely think research is is a big part of it, and then finding someone to properly execute these initiatives. You know, the greatest initiatives in the world can be soured by improper execution. So whomever is entrusted with executing these initiatives needs to be tireless and relentless in following up and getting things accomplished. Thank you, Daniel. Blaine, anything to add? Yeah, um, you know, many practices in surgery centers, they take the wrong approach to marketing if they take any approach at all. Um, some take shotgun approach, some are reactionary where they see Main Street ASC or some Dr. X do this or that and they think they need to do it. Some throw spaghetti or something worse against the wall and hope they get a surgical case out of it. But, um, you know, I can't stress uh, any harder that you need to put together a marketing plan. Uh, if you want to be successful, efficient, and cost conscious, Developing a marketing plan is necessary and is critical. It should be a living document. I think uh, Jimmy mentioned that, that you refer to frequently. And if necessary, make mid-course uh, corrections and change directions. You don't want to do this often, but you need to also understand that, um, uh, that, that the market might warrant it and might be warranted on competitive developments or the market as a whole. But the plan should analyze your market, should have historical performance in there, you know, look at what you've done in the, the past, the competition, and should also establish goals that you want to achieve in the coming 12 months. And with these goals in mind, specific tactics and action plans need to be defined to help you stay focused on the target. But the key components, situational analysis, performance metrics analysis, you know, how many new patients, diagnostic procedures, revenue, et cetera. Then you want to define your target customer segments that had been mentioned before. Then you want to look at your competition and do a competitive analysis. And then we would recommend to do a SWOT analysis based on marketing. Okay, we do that strategic plan and all that type of stuff, but you want to do it with a marketing twist to it. And then, then you want to define what your key messages are. You know, what do you want to be defined as in the marketplace? Then define specific quantifiable goals for the next 12 months. Then you want to create public relations and marketing tactics. You know, we've went over a bunch of them. There's more out there. Uh, whichever ones that you believe that are going to work based off of the research, like Danny said, and based off of the, the market, patient population, the customers, et cetera. Then you put together your action plan, then create a 12-month calendar of the actual PR market initiatives. Hey, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I'm going to do it five times. I'm going to do that two times. I'm going to do that 15 times in January. I'm going to do this in February, and you want to look at that. Uh, you want to track that each week, and then you want to report that back to the administration or board or whatever on a uh, periodic basis. Then you want to develop an annual marketing budget, and, um, and then you want to go execute. But that's essentially, in a nutshell, what your marketing plan should look like. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to bring this back over to you to uh, lead the discussion on our next question. So who actually needs to be involved in an ASC's marketing efforts? Sure. So first off, just from an organizational perspective, I think we've addressed the fact that uh, marketing is not just key, but it's uh, possibly the most important thing an organization can do aside from providing the highest level of care. So for us, we believe in hiring the right level of experts uh, to hiring or engaging with the right level of experts to provide marketing services uh, back to the respective organization. 
so while an integrated approach to your let's call it the human capital within your organization is necessary, having the right level of technicians and expertise within your organization to provide uh, the marketing uh, efforts uh, is important. So when I say integrated, uh, I mean if you offer uh, unique services such as you know, robotics, robotic technology, superior outcomes, you know, simulation technology, and integration with the physician will be uh, very important and the right level of feedback to then tailor that conversation back towards the consumers will be important. So getting the physicians involved, yes. Um, having the physicians drive the marketing efforts, uh, I think that there is a, a better way to do that. So our perspective is, again, work with the right technical experts um, on the healthcare or, um, and the business side to, <clears throat> to essentially deliver this marketing program. In addition to that, uh, engaging with the right level of consumer feedback through uh, consumer focus groups and physician focus groups, depending on what your marketing channels are, uh, is also important, uh, largely because as an individual or as a group or a unit, you still can't always nail that message, and it's not always easy to understand what exactly is the consumer looking for. Uh, so we're always seeking uh, that level of information from uh, respective healthcare consumers or physicians if we're marketing directly to them as well. Thank you. Blaine? Yeah, I'd take it a little bit further in the sense that I would say essentially everyone should be involved in the marketing effort. Um, what I mean by that is while most people do not equate, uh, you know, what I would coin the director of first impressions as part of marketing effort, that person actually is the one sitting at the front desk answering the phone. Um, so they're the first touch that a lot of times people have with your with your practice or your surgery center. They give the first impression, and that has a major impact. And I'm using that person because uh, it it takes a all hands on deck approach, and it's a culture. So it's an attitude, if you will. I've been in many surgery centers that were failing, and and we went and researched and tried to figure out what the heck's going on. It shouldn't be failing. This is great. You know, all the all the other things look good. Well, there was a culture of no that was in the, the surgery center. They they couldn't figure out how we could service this patient's individual needs or that surgeon's individual needs, et cetera. So it's a, sometimes it's a culture. I mean, you can just go read online reviews of some of the doc's offices and, and see, oh, great doctor, but uh, front office staff was whatever. You know, they had a negative view of that. So we must create an environment where everyone understands that they're part of the, the marketing team. Uh, obviously, like it was said, implementing a marketing plan requires a team effort. You've got to access resources from several functional areas. So you've got to get buy-in from all those guys. You need to have a marketing committee that includes the decision makers and the person that's responsible for managing the execution or the person that's responsible for executing. Obviously, there's different sizes of surgery centers. There's a single surgery center with one or two um, one or two ORs all the way up to chains of these things. So it varies from place to place and depending on the size of the operation. But one key point that uh, I think that we ha we've stressed but not enough, an ASC needs to track and quantify the results of individual or specific efforts or tactics weekly. And the point person needs to be held accountable. They're, they need to report those to their supervisor and to see if they're accomplishing or achieving the intended goals or if you're getting a return on investment, which we'll talk about more. But there needs to be strong accountability. And the only way that we'll have accountability is by having a plan, tactics, and things that we can track, et cetera. So as you see, all of these things add up at the end of the day to your entire program. Thank you, Blaine. A uh, couple more questions to the round table for the Q&A. Uh, let's get into that question of ROI. Uh, Jimmy, lead our discussion on how should an ASC measure its marketing ROI. Sure. Well, you have to think back about the various marketing channels that we discussed and uh, the ability to uh, measure that to understand if it's working and if it's not. Uh, the reality is you can only measure about half of your marketing channels depending on uh, which marketing channels you are, you are pursuing. 
However, from a technical perspective, uh, we utilize a series of uh, different technologies that we've integrated, created interfaces with one another to track our metrics of where the leads came from, which keywords they may have come from, how they were generated through our website, which offline marketing channel they may have come from. We then track uh, specific, we just call call center or sales center metrics. Uh, that includes uh, not just inquiries that may have taken place from the respective patients, but uh, those are those leads qualified? What are the questions that they are asking? How long are they on the phone? And then ultimately, which percentage of those convert to a procedure, a treatment, a consultation, et cetera? Now, the tools that are utilized uh, will utilize, depending on the offline marketing channel, unique phone numbers, uh, unique tracking numbers, so when they call in or if they find us from a um, specific page on the website that has a unique tracking number, we're able to understand how effective a marketing channel uh, is. And we often find that when we engage with organizations, uh, they may believe that they're getting a high call volume or a high online lead volume from a respective marketing channel, uh, when in fact it is uh, quite the opposite, and they may just be receiving more leads just from general referrals uh, or physician referrals. So the utilization of dashboards and other tracking mechanisms to, and then the integration of a call center or patient coordinator to uh, help to track those uh, marketing uh, investments uh, have been what have helped us to uh, ultimately optimize these marketing campaigns. It's an ongoing effort. It's not something that you optimize and you move on. Continuously track. Uh, we have a practice of, uh, we have a dashboard that comes out daily with all the organizations that we manage. Uh, and in addition, we do a deep dive every Monday morning uh, as well that allows us to look at the tracking, look at the performance, and uh, make uh, spend and uh, keyword uh, marketing effort uh, adjustments um, on a really on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you. Daniel? Yes, kind of to expand on what uh, Jimmy just mentioned, he mentioned a lot of the tracking the online metrics and the, the keyword and the pay-per-click where those yeah. patients are coming from. Obviously, that is uh, of the utmost importance. Uh, on top of that, you know, it's also uh, important to measure where else your patients are coming from. If you are currently engaged in three initiatives, three marketing initiatives, you know, the, the first touch person, the appointment center or the secretary or whomever it may be, needs to ask where that patient came from. And every week or two weeks, those metrics need to be analyzed. If you're seeing a high volume of calls or inquiries from one or two of these initiatives, but not from the third, you need to be able to, this will help you either tell the third one to be more effective or let you know that it's not working and to invest more time and money into the ones that are working. Um, if you're, you know, if you're calculating ROI based on advertisements, if you're doing newspaper or magazine advertisements, which I have a very distinct policy on, you know, the cost of the, the advertisement, one or two patients may you know, it may cover the cost of that advertisement very well. However, I don't feel that that is a, uh, a proper return on investment. If an advertisement costs you $1,000 and it brought in two patients, yes, the revenue generated from those two patients is high. However, you only got two patients from something that was generated to 1,000 or 2,000 people. So you're, you know, based on the audience, the return from that audience is a very small percentage. So I think with whatever engagement you are involved in, you need to figure out how many people are you targeting and then what is the return on that. Um, benchmarking is obviously uh, the easiest way to do this. Uh, over the first month or so, you can get a, a feel of how many patients are coming in through a referral source and then using that information, that data, to either expand or minimize that initiative. Um, you know, a one-to-one -one or two-to-one or even a five-to-one uh, five ROI is definitely not what I see as uh, as effective. It may be profitable, but I don't see it as effective. Thank you. Let's take a few minutes for the last question for the round table and then get right into the Q&A. Uh, Blaine, some quick thoughts. What could prevent ASC's marketing efforts from becoming successful? Um, you know, a few thoughts is uh, if they're disconnected from reality. Some believe that marketing and medicine do not go hand in hand. Um, I believe we talked about why uh, that's not the case. Uh, lack of will. You know, the team's dedication to implementation will be weak if the ASC does not go through the process that, processes that we spoke about. You know, crafting the strategies and tactics themselves, brainstorming possibilities, performing what-if analysis, researching best practices, and 
backtracking when suggested uh, actions don't seem likely to work, as uh, was just mentioned. You know, in the ASC leadership, also known as the surgeon partners, administrative team, et cetera, need to put in a bit of effort and sweat into the plan and program and not walk away at the first sign of trouble. Um, you need to consult with experts. You know, leave out the technical expertise and the terrible marketing outcomes you can achieve are endless. You know, Jimmy and Danny are the experts in this area. You know, you need their input. If you want your marketing strategy to never reach beyond average, make sure you only look at what other ASCs and people in your same specialty surgeons are doing. While it's important to research what other ASCs are doing and surgeons are doing as far as marketing, but not looking at other industries, different surgeon specialties, larger or smaller surgery centers, other professional services firms for what might transfer or work well in your space. Uh, because not looking outside of your space for inspiration will mean that you're a follower and not a leader. And we're all here learning, spending time doing this to become a leader. Um, not creating an uh, environment for dedicated execution. You know, if your culture is such where marketing and business development is second fiddle to anything, you'll stay in the land of terrible marketing. Um, you must set action steps and hold people accountable, as we talked about before. And the leadership must set clear expectations and give feedback, make tools and resources available, and put incentives and consequences in place to influence people's behavior. You have to have the right people in place or hire consultants. Um, whether, whether um, whatever route that you take, um, the skills, knowledge, and motivation to perform is required. You heard about the, the road that's paved with good intentions? Uh, take it and see where you end up. Because um, it's tough, it's an investment, but you got to go all in or it's going to fail. Give up too soon, uh, then you're going to fail. This is, this is a process, not an not a event. Relying upon a single tactic or event, event to uh, do the job is, is a reason to fail. Um, creating a market committee team of nice people, you know, that leads you to the paved road. People in general want to be agreeable with anything new or visionary. It's difficult to get everyone to agree, and it's easy for people to say no and poke holes in new ideas. But the tired and worn out, overused, less excited ideas tend to get people to agree. But you must get uh, innovative, innovative ideas implemented, or your competition will exploit those opportunities while you come up with the, the, the terrible marketing strategies, if you will, because everybody else is doing them. You know. So those are a lot of the reasons that, that I've seen fail. You've got to be committed and, and make it happen. Daniel, anything to add? Yeah, obviously, uh, as Blaine said, the, the execution of uh, your marketing program is probably the most important thing that you can do. Um, there's other, I think, a few f factors that can lead to the success or failure of uh, a marketing campaign. One of the biggest things, I think, is the message you are sending. Uh, if you have a message that you want to send or have an identity that you want to create, the way you facilitate that, that identity is of the utmost importance. If you have the greatest message in the world, but it's not brought about in the right way, it's not communicated correctly, it become, the message then becomes denigrated and looks poor. Um, I think that a lot of times ASCs, and in terms of marketing and medicine, the focus relies too heavily on lauding the accomplishments of the ASC and of the physician without taking into account the needs of their clientele. You want to appear sort of sympathetic and in tune with what your potential patients are looking for as opposed to just saying, look how wonderful we are and look at all the things we can do for you. You want to create a sense of confidence in them by, by highlighting your services, but you don't want to come off as solicitory. Uh, another thing is not really knowing the difference between advertising and marketing. I think the big confusion is if you are going to, what is advertising and what is marketing? You know, is doing uh, an advertisement in a newspaper or magazine, is that marketing? For me, no. I don't think there's that's marketing. I think that's blanket advertising. 
uh, with the vendors we work with, if we are going to advertise, I have a, uh, a strict reciprocation policy. If I'm going to invest money in a publication, I want something else besides that advertising. I want a half-page contribution or a feature on one of my physicians or clients. And it takes a little bit of wiggling, but it gets done. And that's part of the execution process is having people in place, knowing how to pitch media, and knowing how to pitch the proper people. Um, I also think spending too much money is, is uh, a recipe for failure. If you're not tracking your metrics, you could be dumping money month after month into a black hole that's not generating you any patients. And over time, that money is going to start to add up, and you're not seeing any return on that. So again, as we mentioned before, tracking is, is going to be the key to show you what's working and what isn't working. Um, I think the last thing is not understanding the psychology of decision making. Uh, with patients and with potential consumers, the psychology of their decision making is a science in and of itself. You need to be able to execute, uh, you know, getting them from being inquiries to conversion, and that is a specific science and specific discipline. Um, having your staff well trained in knowing what to say and, more importantly, what not to say. Uh, patients who have inquiries that want information from your, from your sales team or whoever, whomever, the sales team can be a big part of turning that patient away because they give them the improper information. So the sales team needs to know the questions they should answer and the questions they should never answer. I think that's a, a big part of it too. So there's a, a few different factors that go into making something either successful or uh, an outright failure. Thank you, Daniel, and certainly thank you, uh, Blaine and Jimmy, for uh, the roundtable discussion. We're now going to move into the Q&A portion. Uh, as a reminder to our attendees, you can submit your questions by typing them into your control panel in a space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. God, uh, we, we, we're going to go probably a little bit over the top of the hour, take a, take a few, uh, few questions before we wrap up, but I certainly want to direct your attention to the contact information on this final slide. For our panelists, certainly encourage you to contact all of them, each of them directly, uh, if, if you have questions for them personally or, again, we don't get necessarily to address your question during the time we have. I know each of them would be happy to hear from you. Uh, first question comes from uh, this attendee is, uh, is, is part of a smaller ASC, limited resources, understands the need for market, but how should they go about structuring and implementing this, the, the, these great ideas, this, this, this great plan that you've outlined? Uh, during uh, during the roundtable, uh, Blaine, let me have you uh, start our discussion. Yeah, that's a that's a good question because I'm I'm sure it's whenever we talk about call centers and uh, interface and this or that, people are thinking, man, that sounds expensive, and I don't know how I could do that. I only have uh, a 0.5 FTE or whatever. Well, I could tell you that. I have one client that has a quote unquote call center. It's one person, you know, so they answer the phone and uh, for the special number and the red line is on, on that, uh, it's actually a female and it's on her desk and she answers it from her home. So it, at the end of the day, it really doesn't cost that much. So what I would say is, you know, look at, uh, say that you can't hire anyone, okay, but you have to find someone to do it in house then you need to inventory their skills and, and then look at this plan that you've outlined and go through that process and say, okay, here's the 10 things that we need to get done and match that with that person that you have's skill set. So they can take four of those and then they can oversee the other six and outsource those, um, you know, search engine optimization or uh, website stuff ad print uh, media, ad and print media, call center, all that type of stuff. Or you can hire a third party company that you guys work together and come up with a plan and go through this process and pay them sometimes on a success base. So you pay them some XYZ dollar amount every month, fixed number for um, some of these uh, tactics and whatnot. And then if they improve your your success or your patient flow, whatever you want to come up with, then incentivize them more. Uh, so there's many ways to, to get there. It, it just, at the end of the day, it takes a commitment and a mindset that, hey, whatever it takes, I'm going to get there, even if I have limited resources. If, if I could add to that just briefly, I, I mean, I think that 
you've invested money in your facility, you've invested money in your physician staff, your medical staff. If you want to grow and you want to be effective, you can't tiptoe around marketing. You have to be willing to invest in that as well. So we see that question a lot. Well, I don't have a very big budget or I only have a few thousand dollars to spend. What can you do with this? We believe in let's take a, a bottom-up approach and let's understand what exactly you're looking to accomplish. And we should address candidly the strategies and the costs that we think it will uh, take to accomplish that. But let's also understand that if the group that's working with you and for you is effective uh, and you do achieve your goals, let's understand that that can help take your organization to the next level as well. So that commitment to actually looking at this as an investment and not just an additional expense um, is important. Uh, we also believe in dedicated resources. So I think that uh, certainly there's nothing wrong with scanning your uh, environment to see who may have some you know, associated skills to uh, help to coordinate some of the marketing efforts that may be necessary. Uh, but first, look at the marketing strategy and understand just like it takes a very skilled technician from a surgical perspective to be a great surgeon, it also takes a very skilled technician from a marketing perspective uh, to be a great marketer for your organization as well. Uh, so being willing to invest uh, the time and money and effort uh, to understand then the timeline that it takes to see that level of return. And then look at the credibility of the organizations that you're looking to engage with as well. If they have a proven track record, uh, be willing to invest in that organization to help support you and you know chances are uh, you know your um, your facility won't be an exception from a success story perspective you know you will see that level of success as well if you're willing to invest in it thank you let's uh, again let's, let's take a few more questions before we wrap up and uh, I'm going to give our, our presenters a chance to share some final thoughts but Billy on the, this question so it seems like maybe related but uh, this attendee says that their, their, their clinic is located in an urban area and she wants to know if there are any unique strategies to help with community outreach. Uh, Dan, do you want to start the start a discussion on that? Yes. Um, if you obviously the demographics of your community are going to play a role in the patients you're seeing. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you're in a more urban area, you need to figure out what the demographics and the psychographics of that area are. What are the needs of the patients in that area? In an urban area, I feel that the the needs of a patient may be different than the suburban area. Uh, traditionally, in urban areas, you have a higher incidence of musculoskeletal injury due to car accidents or due to uh, you know spinal conditions. With that said, you may want to put a focus on spinal care in your facility because that's the, the patients you are seeing. If you are excluding that from your practice or you don't have it within your practice, you're missing out on a huge market segment. And uh, I've worked with Blaine before on recruiting physicians to a facility. If you are looking to add something that the community needs within your within your facility, uh, I mean, contacting Blaine and helping him do the recruiting is is a, a vital factor. Uh, also, in an urban area, sometimes you have more of a uh, Medicare Medicaid population, uh, or you may have a more commercially insured population. You need to, if your facility is an out of network facility or an in network facility, you may need to target your marketing towards those who have the mean uh, the insurance means to to utilize your procedures. So it's just a matter of, again, doing the research and finding out the demographics of that area. Uh, and if you're going to add a, a position to complement the services that are needed, making sure you consult an expert like Blaine to, to help you with that. Thank you. Um, Jimmy, do you want to add anything? No, I mean, I, I think that, you know, he's, he's really addressed uh, the majority of it and was able to, to speak to it as well. But, again, just that the level of commitment and understand that it's an investment just like you're investing in your people uh, and your organization, uh, you know, committing to that um, and trusting those people who have become experts who have proven in other facilities like yours or different than yours uh, as well that they can grow your organization and being willing to uh, to invest in that just like anything else uh, will be a hopefully a story for success. Well, let's, uh, let's, get, let's get one more question and then we're going to wrap up. Um, Let's let's take the question again. I, I'm not surprised to have seen this. How do we get more referrals from referring docs? Uh, Jimmy, you want to start a discussion on that? Sure. And you know, bear in mind. And thank you for the question. Uh, bear in mind, you know, our expertise is uh, around an integrated approach, which primarily uh, is focused around direct-to-consumer uh, marketing. Uh, but we believe that ultimately for direct-to-consumer marketing to be uh, optimally effective, uh, that a strong referral basis. Uh, primarily for credibility uh, is always important. 
uh, we are seeing beginning to see a shift that uh, patients are not always now listening to what their primary care physician says. Uh, they are out there looking for new alternatives, and they may not understand that their lifelong doc that their lifelong doctor may not necessarily be uh, uh, the best referring uh, expert for a specific specialized treatment that that patient may need. So consumers are uh, looking and shopping and deciding by themselves. Uh, however, from a physician referral perspective, uh, we believe that one, if you're going to invest in marketing and invest in physician referrals, uh, the marketing efforts are not um, translatable from a direct consumer perspective to a direct physician perspective. Uh, we believe that if you're engaging with an organization to build your direct to consumer or sorry direct to physician marketing um, strategy, uh, that you should also engage in some level of focus groups to understand it. is your message from a differentiation perspective truly translating over to the physicians. Uh, we obviously know physicians want to uh, see things that are more credible and more concrete. So if you are making claims, they'd like to see those claims backed up by fact. Uh, they also like to see uh, you know, that if they are going to refer patients over, that they understand what level of care and what type of outcomes and what type of treatment is taking place with those patients that they have received or that they have referred. So in addition to that customized uh, marketing channel for direct to physicians, uh, we also would emphasize that you should build an online uh, physician referral portal, something that makes it very easy for a physician to go and to type in the patient name and the type of care they need and able to pass uh, patients' information uh, back and forth in an online manner allows the administrative support staff that's supporting this referral uh, to take place in a more efficient manner and also allows the referring physician to uh, track the um, success uh, of that patient's care uh, at your respective facility as well. Thank you. Daniel, would you like to add to that? Yeah, just uh, very quickly. Um, you know, a lot of the, the initial ways to generate referrals from primary care physicians was to send a practice rep or someone, you know, to their office. Uh, traditionally, you know, you bring them lunch or in, in brochures. Um, you know, this may sound like blasphemy, but I don't really think that that's overly effective. I think that if a patient, if a physician is going to refer a patient to a doctor, they want to meet face-to-face -face with that doctor. They're entrusting the care of their patient to this doctor they're referring to. I think doing seminars uh, for physicians is incredibly effective. When you're speaking to them uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer level as opposed to uh, pandering to them by sending them lunch and a, and a practice rep to their office, I don't feel it creates a, a system of, of integrity. Um, having Inviting physicians to join you to discuss, say, a newer procedure or some advancements in medicine and getting them involved uh, really makes for, for a, a beneficial relationship. Um, I. My company pretty much came about because I, when I was employed with another physician, was going office to office, you know, bringing lunch and bringing brochures, and one of the physicians finally said to me, he said, listen, I've been referring to the same orthopedic group for 10 years. The doctor in that group is the godfather of my child, and we play golf every Sunday. What makes you think that a couple of brochures and some sandwiches are going to break that referral pattern for me? And he was, you know, pretty amiable about it, but that, that made a lot of sense to me. What we found was that if patients are coming into their primary care's office and asking to see a specific physician, the physician, or the primary care physician's job is to appease that patient. If they're referring that patient to the specialist they're requesting and that patient has a good outcome, they've made their, their patient happy. They're going to increase the referrals they now send to you because they know the outcomes for those patients that they're referring are good. So that is making patients ask for you, your company or your ASC by name, just like they ask for any other product by name, is going to be beneficial for you and the physician. Uh, it creates a, a system of reliance between the two. Uh, also, find out if that physician, what level of that physician wants to be involved in the care of the patient. Uh, Post-examination or post-operatively, does that physician want to be involved, or are they one of the physicians who just basically refers the patient and their hands off? You know, understanding the needs of each of your referring physicians is going to maintain that relationship. So I think you need to understand the needs of each of the physicians you're soliciting referrals from. Well, excellent. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Thank you, uh, Blaine. Thank you, Jimmy. We, again, we ran a little over, so I'm just going to wrap up the program now. Again, I want to certainly direct our attendees to this final slide. Contact our, our, our presenters directly. You can also reply to any of the emails you've received about this program if you have questions, feedback, or requests for future topics. Uh, for webinars, but again, I, I 
greatly want to thank our, our, our panelists for taking the time today to address as many questions as they did during the round table as well as the Q&A, and certainly thank all the attendees who took time out of their day uh, to join us. Uh, with that, this concludes today's program, and I wish everyone a terrific afternoon and a wonderful uh, long holiday weekend. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys.